we can start. Okay. So um, originally when we proposed this, uh, we said it's going to be a load balancing service version two, Juno and beyond. Um, we'll talk about what was done and what's the actual delivery date. Um, and I would like to start with a question of um, from everyone in the cloud, uh, in the cloud, in the crowd. <laughs> Uh, how many people have uh, load balancing functions in their environment? Okay. How many people would like to get load balancing APIs as a standard APIs in their OpenStack? Okay. Good. So you are in the right session. Okay. So we'll talk a little bit about what led us to uh, do the V2 API, uh, a little bit about the process and what's the key features that uh, we put into version two, uh, drive a little bit about the core capabilities, the core API, and then uh, the key requirements were to do TLS termination in layer seven. So I'll talk a little bit what's the uh, solution. Then uh, we'll switch to uh, Phil and Brandon that will talk about the reference implementation and Doug will summarize what's the current status, okay? Okay. So the road to Elbus V2. Um, so about, uh, let's say about, um, I believe about seven or eight months ago, um, we started to see a lot of traction around the Elbus API, both uh, uh, service providers such as Bluebox, Rackspace, HP Cloud, and some users, and obviously the ADC vendors were uh, discussing together on how uh, the V1 API, which I'll be uh, covering very briefly, could be uh, done to actually meet what we were seeing as customer requirements. Um, as you can see, all those people were kind of involved. And the process that we were doing is we were asking how the V1, which basically has a very basic layer for load balancing, doing HTTP, HTTPS pass through, and TCP, uh, with some basic stuff, could be extended and could address uh, user demands. So the process that we've done basically, and I've, I have the links underneath it, so if anyone is interested to actually look at the raw material, we did first a user survey. Uh, we got some people voting on features and requirements, and we summarized all of this with a result of that the first requirement was people actually wanted to have um, under the same IP multiple TCP port serving. Um, kind of seemed trivial, but the V1 didn't support that. Uh, and there were some critical issues to, from the way it was defined to do that. Uh, TLS termination, um, meaning uh, the load balancer would terminate connection. By the way, who knows why TLS termination is such a coveted uh, feature? Anyone? <laughs> Steven. Okay. And why do they want that? <laughs> Do you want me to explain what it is? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's basically taking uh, your HTTPS connection and terminating it on the actual load balancer. Uh, and then you can use either straight HTTP or HTTPS to your backup. Right. Sure. And this is important not just because you want to terminate it on the load balancer, because it's simpler to manage on a single point of management, and a lot of uh, the more advanced capabilities of load balancer will only be available if, you, if the load balancer could actually look on the content. Um, so this is one of the key requirements. SNI, TLS SNI, is the capability to support uh, multiple different certificates out of the load balancer using the host name. And layer seven content switching is the capability to use the payload information such as URI, cookies, et cetera, to actually uh, uh, define how traffic is being handled, whether it needs to be routed to different server groups, whether it needs to be uh, um, stopped, or whether it needs to uh, be redirected to another URI, okay? So those were defined as the phase one features that we want to do, but on top of that, uh, there are additional features that were required, things like client certificates, the backend encryption, uh, content modification, and UDP support. Okay? So in order to do that, the first thing that we need to do is to fix the core model. The original V1 core model has a, short, a few shortcomings. The first of them was that the pool was the root object. Now, obviously, if you want to do things like layer 7 content switching, which will have multiple pools, you cannot have the pool as the root object. 
So the first thing that we went and fixed is created an object called load balancer as a root object, which has the IP. And then you can attach multiple listeners underneath it. Hence, this addresses the requirement to do multiple TCP ports under the same IP. And then the pool and the health motor, et cetera, become uh, uh, simple logical objects, okay? Um, another thing that we kind of fix, because we've seen that the V1 uh, is kind of problematic in that way, is that the health monitor and pool had a many-to-many -many relationship, and we thought that it makes sense to actually have the health and pool a one-to-one -one relationship. Um, so that's the first API change. Um, the other thing is that we really wanted to add the TLS termination and the layer 7. The key objection to doing TLS termination originally was um, there was requirement to not store the certificates as part of the Neutron database. Uh, and out of nowhere came the Barbican project, uh, which will be used to store the certificates of the load balancer. And then those certificates are going to be presented in the load balancer APIs just by their TLS ID, OK? So simple TLS uh, termination would be done by specifying on the listener that the listener does TLS termination and attaching an SSL ID stored in Barbica. The other feature is the set of certificates as an SNI list. So that addresses the SNI requirement. And the last feature is actually, since we uh, created the pool as a logical object, we can now reuse the pool as part of the content switching. So content switching, in essence, is a list of policies, order list. So the engines are expected to evaluate them in order. And the first one that's being, is being met, this is the one that gets executed. Under a policy, we get a set of rules that are, in essence, an, an, an or condition. So all rules need to be met for a policy to become true. And policy and rules obviously could be anything that compares the content, uh, things like URI matching, cookie matching, and things like this. And the action, in essence, either, is either redirect to pool, um, stop, uh, reject the traffic, or redirect to a URL. Okay? All of this was the things that we were uh, completing uh, as an API, as a an, uh, uh, basic reference implementation. Uh, intended to get into Juno. Um, Phil? Yeah, green is go. <laughs> Alrighty, folks. Thank you, Sam. Uh, my name is Philip Tuhu, developer for the LBAS team. Uh, I, I'm going to briefly discuss uh, some of the rep ideas for the reference implementations that we have uh, and some ideas going forward. Uh, we have uh, some concrete implementation options, uh, three of which. Uh, first, uh, uh, the non-agent based implementation, uh, if, if you want to try that out now, uh, development version. Uh, we have ideas or plans for an agent based version, which uh, will provide for some scalability, allowing you to deploy out multiple nodes. Uh, in Octavia, uh, our operator grade uh, may have uh, a little bit longer initial delivery uh, cycles there. Uh, so first, I'm going to discuss the non-agent version. Uh, currently, that's available in feature branches, so you could actually go ahead and pull that down. Uh, it's, it's in reviews, of course. Uh, so you could pull that down, test it out, uh, experiment with the LBAS v2 API. Uh, it's not scalable, nor is it highly available. I uh, don't plan on updating it to do any of those things. Um, this is strictly a proof of concept. Uh, it's a development version, just to, to get you comfortable with the V2 APIs. And as you can see here with my amazing diagram, that it's uh, everything's deployed directly on the Neutron API node. So you'll spin up the, the, or you'll call the V2 API, and it will deploy an HA proxy process directly to the API node. So it's really simply, strictly for development purposes, proof of concept. Uh, next, we have our agent-based uh, version, which is uh, something we plan on doing. Uh, it's currently not available. Uh, it will provide some scalability. Uh, it's based off of the V1 agent. So uh, besides adhering to the V2 uh, data models, there's really no difference there. So it provides some scalability. You'll be able to scale out with uh, the agent and backends. Uh, the HA uh, capabilities uh, would require some more updating or mechanisms to actually make that highly available. Uh, so th that's... Uh, a thing to be discussed if we go the agent-based route. 
uh, and this one is not really operator grade, uh, but it's, it's definitely primed for feature branch acceptance. That way we could get things moving with the Neutron LBAS. Uh, and to, I guess to visualize that a little bit, as you can see here, the agent driver is going to communicate with the queue, and the queue, uh, or the, the agent on the nodes will actually communicate back and forth, so you can actually deploy this out over multiple nodes uh, to make a somewhat or relatively scalable uh, reference implementation. Uh, next, we have our operator grade based version, and Brandon Logan will discuss that a little bit further. Uh. Hi, I'm uh, Brandon Logan, um, developer on LBAS. Um, so Octavia is meant to solve the issues with the uh, agent reference implementation. Uh, the agent reference implementation, like Phil said, is not HA, and Octavia is going to provide some, some more scalability. Um, a lot of uh, vendors and operators in the LBAS community kind of collaborated on this, and it's currently in design. Um, this is going to be a really high-level view of it. Octavia actually uh, should deserve its own uh, talk, but we only have so much time. Um, so Octavia is going to use uh, Nova instances with the HA proxy on them. Um, it's going to be scalable. It's going to be highly available, and it's going to have the monitoring in place uh, to detect when a VM goes down or HA proxy is uh, not responding. Um, it's also going to support all the LBAS v2 features out of the box uh, because the data models are essentially the same. The API is a little bit different, but the data models are the same, so the translation layer between the two uh, should be relatively simple. Uh, so here's a very simple Octavia diagram. Um, a user is going to request to create a low balancer to Neutron LBAS. Uh, Neutron LBAS is going to pass it to Octavia driver. The driver, like I said, is really essentially kind of a pass-through. It's just going to send it off to the Octavia API, same data model and everything. Uh, Octavia will then do the Nova lifecycle management. Probably in this case, it's going to spin up two VMs, probably an active-passive uh, topology. Um, so it'll also do the monitoring. So if uh, one VM goes down, it'll automatically spin up the passive one, the failover one. Um, so. This is, like I said, this is a simple diagram. It doesn't show the Neutron integrations, because um, so, it's also going to talk to Neutron to plumb the network to create the network resources. And it's also going to talk to Barbican, which uh, is, is kind of a moving target right now, but I think we've got it in place um, for the secure data store. Now, Octavia, I think we're targeting a 0 0.5 release for Kilo. Um, hopefully we can get that and we can get an Octavia driver in for Kilo. Um, speaking of the current status in the future, here's Doug. Hello. <laughs> hey, it works. They took away my boy band mic, I think because I couldn't master the dance moves. Come on, wake up. I, that's the best it's going to get. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so all the code and features we've been talking about, uh, the initial code is available now. Um, it's on a feature branch right there. You're all going to type that in while I talk, right? I told you it wasn't getting any better. Um, <clears throat> the, the, the core object model and CLI and everything, and API he's been talking about, that's in there. The reference driver that Phil talked about is in a Garrett review. There's an etherpad there that has everything else. So if you want to merge together TLS and L7 and play with it as a proof of concept, it's there now. Um, so the code was supposed to be in Juno, and it's not. I don't know if any of you were familiar with the Neutron Incubator and the group-based policy and stuff, but they pretty much ran out of re review cycles. And they decided that large projects weren't working so well as like 12 Garrett chain deep review patches. So they needed somewhere else to put them. The infrastructure team suggested that we just use a, a branch on Git. So that's where LBAS is, is trying things out. We're trying to get all of our code in there, matured, until it's fully baked, and then hopefully we'll merge into Neutron in the Kilo timeframe. Octavia is in Stackforge. I think the page is, the URL is on there somewhere. And Neutron LBAS in Neutron will have a driver that talks to Octavia, but if you want to run Octavia, you'll have to go get it out of Stackforge. Uh, this is just showing you what community drivers we had before, what community drivers we're going to have now. We're adding a couple, we're subtracting one. Uh, features for Kilo and beyond. So we talked about merging the feature branch into Kilo, uh, an Octavia driver. 
um, <clears throat> our friends at eBay demoed a Horizon UI that we loved, which was right now to, to spawn a load balancer, you have to go in and create a pool and then add some members and then add a VIP and then tie them all together and add health monitor. And unless you're in the load balancing industry, that, I don't think that makes any, any sense at all. <clears throat> So the demo he made was, it looked like you're launching a Nova instance. You click, I want a load balancer, and here's his name, and here's his members, and here's the health monitor, go. And then you have a fully functioning load balancer. So that's something else we're gonna try to get in in the kilo time frame, talking to the V2 subsystem. Um, if you wanna contribute to Octavia, there's a URL. Other things we're planning for kilo, integration with heat, integration with solometer, uh, neutron flavors, they're supposed to be in in Juno, those got pushed as well. Hopefully those, we're gonna try to get those in Kilo again. Um, stay tuned, I don't know if Elbas is gonna stay in Neutron, I don't know if it's gonna go to Stackforge, I don't know if it's gonna go to Incubator. There's a lot going on at this summit to try to figure that sort of thing out and solve this code review cycle bottleneck that we've, we've all been having. Um, so that's the rest of our content. We wanted to open the floor now for questions and answers and then we'll let all of you get out of here for the, for the free beer that is right after us. <laughs> so come on up, or we'll get out of here early. Nobody wants to yell at us for being late yet again. <laughs> yeah, so have we. <clears throat> Good. Um, so it's a question about Octavia. Uh, okay. Are you talking directly to Nova to spin up uh, instances? And if yes or no, have you investigated using heat to do that? What? Come on over, Brandon. No. Uh, I don't think we've actually investigated using heat, but uh, there is a uh, Neutron uh, service, or an uh, advanced service that's a, uh, what is it called? Zach Tech? No, not. Tacker. Tacker that uh, does the last cycle manager, which we're investigating that, but I don't think we've in investigated heat yet. Okay. I mean, like, project like Trove or. I mean, product yeah, that spin up instances to deploy an, an, an yeah, instance that have been using it. And I think, like, if, if, you had, if we have your feedback and know what's wrong or what's not wrong, that'd be, that'd be awesome. Okay. Yeah, let us know. Thank you. Any other questions? Anybody interested in seeing a Horizon demo of the feature I talked about? <laughs> yeah. eBay, come on up here. Wait, wait. You got a question? Oh, is is there a uh, compatibility list for, um, for load balancers uh, that are compatible with, with the solution? Yes. Let me go back a few, couple slides. But um, for V1, if you're going to go into the marketplace of OpenStack, uh, you could actually find all the vendors that have a V1 implementation, which is tested and certified, etc. And obviously, when we get V2 into the... Um, into the trunk, then we'll have the similar thing there. Does that answer your question? Yeah. There Is are it? also a couple of private drivers beyond the community drivers. I know there's Brocade drivers and F5 drivers. Okay, I was gonna ask about F5, they're yep. kind of... Yes, five. contact them directly on that. Okay, thanks. Yep. Oh, do you, have a, do you have a dongle? So if I heard that right, you want us to explain the HA model in Octavia and why we're not using HA proxy for that? Okay. I'm going to let one of the... Well, well that one... Uh, 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 yeah, you want to answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to have the Octavia PTL answer that one for you. I don't know if that's on. Go Steven. Oh, is this working? Yeah. Sweet. So there's actually a couple different models that are that are possible to do to, to deliver uh, HA in Octavia. Uh, one of them actually does use something like VRRP. That's our active standby model. Um, but we also had uh, operators. A lot of people who have actually contributed ideas in terms of what they want out of Octavia are operators. Uh, we've had some operators say that they wanted to be, have the option to do single instance as well, which wouldn't have any kind of HA in it. Um, that would basically, if, if you have a, a failed VM or a failed container, uh, would get replaced from um, a, a spare container in, in the spares pool of just spun up and ready to go uh, 
containers. There's also, um, in Octavia version 2, we are planning on delivering an active-active model, um, which would require quite a bit some interesting stuff when it comes to, uh, will require, because we're going to deliver it, um, some interesting uh, things when it comes to the actual routing. And in that case, VRRP is not necessarily appropriate for that. But um, you can see, if you want to see specifically what our uh, front-end and back-end topologies look like. There's actually information in uh, both uh, committed to in, in the documentation section within the Octavia repository, as well as some Garrett reviews for the version 1 and version 2 stuff, which I haven't updated in a couple months, but they're still relatively accurate. So uh, does that answer your question? I didn't even see who asked it. Is good? Okay. Any other questions before we do this UI demo? There's supposed to be one while they finish setting up. Here's one. I was a bit confused with the discussion of how this is part of Neutron, but possibly not later. So that the <laughs> fastest way to move the project forward is to be a part of Neutron. Why is there a thought to move it out later? And if the fastest way to move it forward is out of Neutron, then why isn't it moving out now? So if we move it out of Neutron, you're at least a year plus away because we have to go through TC incubation and all that stuff. So the theory is Neutron should be faster than that, except in the past it hasn't been. So do we keep waiting and hoping that things will get better? Which everybody in Neutron's great, you know, I love those guys. Um, and, and, and they, you know, they say the right things, so we think good things are going to happen. And then, you know, I've only been on this for six months, but my understanding is load, ba load balancing has you know, for the last two years been kind of stalled. So it's, do we bite the bullet and take a year plus hit or do we hope Neutron gets fixed? And so it's not completely clear which of those is the right answer. Has there been any thought about having a, a distributed load balancing function like the distributed router function that we were just looking at before? So like a global load balancer in different regions or? No, like on, on each compute node having an agent that is managed which sort of knows the state of the nodes that are on there and can and can direct traffic via a bridge that's on on that compute node. I can answer that. So if you think about it, if your system is well balanced, then there's more, more chances that your VMs are going to be spread all over the place, right? And load balancer, in essence, has a centralized logic that gets gets traffic and based on some logic, distributes it to a single place. So realistically speaking. Um, how would you distribute that? It's quite different than a security solutions such as firewall and uh, IPS and things like this that actually make sense to distribute. Load balancer, in essence, is centralized. Um, so we were thinking about this, but it's not clear that you actually get any benefit by distributing the load balancer into the different compute nodes because eventually, what will then distribute the traffic to the distributed system? Does that answer your question? I um, hope you wouldn't mind if I just take a moment to um, reply to the previous question about F5. Um, Go for it. Yeah. So we do have a, a package that you can uh, download and get uh, the V1 support, as, as Doug alluded to. It's been out for six months. Um, there, we are tracking the, the V2 and intend to support that as well. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Down. Oh. Slider. You saved the day. Thank you. <laughs> I think sh I think they'll turn you on. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Um, we, uh, as um, Doug spoke about it, right, the UI, which comes with default uh, with Horizon, really sucks. So then we decided to uh, implement our own UI. And this is how it looks. On the landing page, we see all the LB instances created um, with, with the configuration details. Um, and then, like, you, if you want to create a new load balancer, you just launch it as, as if you're launching an instance. Uh, you can pick the existing IP, 
which is allocated to you, or you can just choose to create a new IP. You enter your name, and um, this UI will also create a, a DNS record for you. So I can do demo, you know. And some description, you can choose the algorithm here. Uh, the instance port where your service will be running, uh, your protocol. We have like HTTPS even. We have like also implemented SSL support on it. Uh, here you can specify your SSL certificate. Um, you can choose to use a common certificate, which are some wildcard certificate based on your, your uh, VPC. Or you can provide your own certificate key and, and the chain. Then you specify your monitor. It can be a simple TCP HTTP monitor or ECV checks, which are more enhanced uh, validation with your send string and receive string and frequency. And then in the end, you select what instances you want to make a part of the load balancer. So you can select all the, all the so it will only show you the members which are part of your tenant. So right now I have two, so I can, pick or do all this. And then I, finally I will say launch. It will do some validation. Since I selected HTTPS, it will give me an error because I did not provide SSL certificate. Um, so likewise, I can do HTTP or TCP pass through. Should be fine. Yeah, and oh, anyways, yeah. So that will launch a load balancer. <laughs> It want me to fill all the details. I don't want to. Vivek didn't know he was speaking or demoing yeah. today. So yeah, it was. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a bonus. And then you can edit your your LB. Uh, you can edit all the values you have selected. You can change the instance port or the web port. Um, you can remove, enable, disable members like this. So this is what we have today. Yeah. Any questions? So the functionality that you just showed us there, um, you, you started with a question about an API being available for this. Is any of this stuff available in API, or is that what you were asking? No, this is this UI is entirely running on APIs. Like, okay, so if we want a script creating load balancers and whatnot, sure. like you did through here through the GUI, it's it's available today. Yes. So what was the API question that you were asking earlier, saying how many of you would like to see an API for this? The existing API is V1, right? So it doesn't support all of this functionality. Uh, we are talking about V2, uh, which has the uh, V1 doesn't have SSL certificates, doesn't have the listener ports, and doesn't have the layer seven. So the question was in, since we have V1, and we really want to push V2, I was kind of uh, interested to know how many people are actually using it, and how many people are actually interested to see it as a standard API. And because, we are going to go into the design summit, and we're going to have a discussion on when and how, which is Doug actually was touching. And I really believe that this is something that is crucial and waited long enough to get it. OK, so, so, so this demo, this was V2 fun functionality, correct? Part of it, yeah. Oh, OK. Yes. So s most of the things in here are available in the V1 API? N without the SSL termination. With it, just not the SSL termination. Right. Basically. OK, mm -hmm. thank you. Correct. Hi, right, yeah, uh, so this Horizon functionality, is this uh, just internal to eBay right now? And if so, are you intending to push it upstream? Yeah, this is internal to eBay. Um, we are working with Horizon team to, to make it part of uh, um, OpenStack, open cool. source. Is, is, uh, is there a blueprint up that we can take a look at? Not right now, yeah, but um, I would like to work, if, if you know someone in Horizon, we can work closely with Horizon team. and. The, we, we actually slowed down the pace because we, we learned that uh, we are coming up with new API version. So we wanted to move over UI to um, use new APIs and then uh, re launch it. Okay, or cool. release it. Thank you. Yeah. Any final questions? All right, thank you, all of you. If you have any more questions, come talk to any of us.